I'm very, very honored today to have uh, two guest speakers. Our main one, Roosevelt Petri, who will be introduced by Commissioner Senegal in just a moment. I talk about Roosevelt for a moment. I met him just recently and had a good conversation with him over lunch. Uh, he is an alumnus of Lamar University in industrial technology. He is a avid uh, proponent of this region of Lamar University, a great speaker, and a entrepreneur in the true sense of the word. He started off from pretty much from scratch, from nothing, to build a really great business that has done such an uh, entity as the Houston Arena for the rocket, Minute Maid Park, a number of our refineries in the area, and um, lots of other good things are going on with industrial technology and, and industrial buildings. Most importantly, he has a real passion for this region, a real passion for students learning, and I'm just really honored to have him here. So before I do that, I'm going to give someone who knows him very well, Mr. Senegal, to give a formal introduction for Roosevelt. Yeah. Mr. Senegal. Well, it's a deep honor here to be here today. I'm a graduate of Lamar, two-time graduate at Criminal Justice graduate, and along with um, teaching certification. I got my teaching certification from Lamar here uh, back in the mid-80s. And I want to say it's an honor because introducing my good friend, my brother, my coffin down, my support, everything is Mr. Petrie. And his beautiful wife has accepted me as part of their family. I've known Mr. Petrie now for over 35 years. I met Mr. Petrie in the barber shop, you know, when I had a lot more hair. And he still has a lot of hair. He came in with a back brace on because he had just had back uh, surgery. Ironically, I didn't get to see him again maybe until 15 years later, and he was a multimillionaire there. <laughs> so at that time, I think he was doing construction and barely making it. So he's inspired me along in my political career, not only being one of my biggest supporters, but what brought us together is his genuine heart for this region, Southeast Texas, along with the students. Uh, in my occupation, I ha I'm a former teacher, as I said, for 20 years, former coach. And I would have kids that graduated in college trying to make it. I would call his firm, GP Industry, talk to Donnell, talk to Mr. P. Tell me to just talk to everybody. He would hire them so they could have some means of, of, of survival while they're in college. He does it. Ex-convicts, he's hired them at the risk of uh, losing some of his uh, credibility. But, uh, he has a deep heart for this, this uh, region, along with uh, being here today is one of the reasons he's here, because he wants to inspire you as future engineers or business uh, people to try and, you know, achieve at least what he has or even more. So I'm, I'm honored to introduce uh, Mr. Roosevelt P. Uh, uh, I'm flattered, really. And to be doing it here in my alma mater means a lot also. So I hope you get something out of this. Feel free to call on myself. I'm a county commissioner here in Jefferson County. But uh, if you get to Mr. Petrie, Ms. Marlene, Donnell, you can get to me. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm very, very honored to be here. Uh, I'm a little untraditional. And I, I've got a couple of people I want to recognize. A couple of my college professors, Dr. Zoom, and also Dr. G. <laughs> These are guys that, I, that knew me before I even <laughs> really pretty much knew myself, but I was direction I really wanted to do. At that time, we all had to go to law school. And I, I really was, um, that was my direction, was to be an attorney. And I told Dr. Zoom and everyone that's what I was going to be. And it was going to be better than Walter Humphrey. Uh, that, that was, my, that was, that was my, my benchmark. But that didn't, that's not the way it turned out for me. Uh, I, what, I, what I plan to do is to speak a little about my journey. And there are some people in this room that know I was headed in one direction, but ended up in another direction. But before I get started, I want to introduce my wife, Maureen. Commissioner Senegal, I thank you so much. Uh, we have some GP employees that want to see me speak today, so they, they came. Uh, we all stand, please. These two guys are also uh, Lamar graduates. Uh, Tina has a, a master's degree in biology, and uh, Christina 
50 degrees in finance. So um, uh, quite a few of us have, have, have been here, and uh, Darnell's our general manager, these two young ladies work in county. I would like to also recognize uh, Councilman Doucette, he's a former city councilman. <laughs> My uncle came. <laughs> and I also want to introduce a couple of my employees to the Port of Economic Development Corporation. These two young ladies here. Uh, I really wanted the Economic Development Corporation to come is in case uh, some of you may have ideas and inspirations to uh, go into business. And they may be able to help assist you. So I really want them, so don't, don't feel afraid to talk to them uh, after this. And uh, maybe they can give us information too. So I'm grateful y'all guys came. These two young ladies on the second one. Um, my journey was, well, when I was a little boy, I was stuck there and just doing little <laughs> uh, Probably about nine years old, I used to cut yards. My sister was seven. And we would cut our neighbor's yards and Believe it or not, we paid almost more money than my daddy made, <laughs> cutting grass. And uh, I got to eat for free because he got a cute little boy and his little sister cutting, cutting yards. And everybody y'all would cut one to feed us. And that's probably why it's not so nice today. You know, it never went away on me. But I uh, started out cutting grass. And my whole life, even when I was working for different companies, I always had a little business on the side. And whether it was putting peepholes at a company called Petri Peephole Door Services. And we would put little peepholes in doors and go to apartment complexes and, and drill holes in the door and put the peephole in. Made 20 bucks. Now, this is a long time ago. $20 was a lot. I paid like $1.99 for a peephole. <laughs> drill a hole. Hey, nice profit. And at one point, it got to where I had like eight, nine guys that were putting peepholes in for me. And we would travel to Houston. I was there about 16 years old, 17 years old. We would travel to Houston and go to apartment complexes and put peepholes in doors. And we went from peepholes to dead bull locks. <laughs> so we started doing peepholes and dead bull locks. And we actually started hanging silly things. I wasn't an electrician, but we knew how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and we made some good money doing those things. So being an entrepreneur is exciting. It's a challenge. It's, 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 how can I put it, it's, it's, it gives you the opportunity to do many things, to have a different viewpoint of life. As you grow in business, so does the responsibility grow. Um, GP industrial contractors, I was appointed to serve on a uh, committee through the Port Arthur Economic Development Corporation. I was the chairman of the Moy University of Ad Hoc the Lord program. Because of that, volunteering my time, I met a man by the name of Morris Alford. Some of y'all guys may know him. He was a former owner of Gov Copper. Gov Copper helped put me in business. He wanted, a, he wanted to get inside the refineries, so he felt he needed another division, a minority division. Well, let me tell you something. <coughs> he still couldn't get in. I bought him out, started my own thing, and we got in. But because he helped us, we gave him a lot of business. I think that company now is worth about a quarter of a billion dollars annually, that particular company. Well, one of the things, and I see we got minorities and, and women in here. <coughs> so again, I mean, I'm the kind of guy I'm going to speak the truth and reality. One of the things I learned about being in business is you don't, for one, play the race car or the sex car. You get it on your own merits, what you bring to the table. You want a win-win, value-added situation. Not because I'm this minority group. I would not even today take a job because I'm African American. I would not even work for you. I want you to hire my company because we bring quality, because we experience, because we know what we're doing. We're going to meet you. We're going to be competitive in our pricing. We meet the litmus test of what you're looking for. Those are the reasons why I think and I know our business has grown as it has today. We worked on businesses such as the Toyota Center for the Houston Market. We worked on Bay Park 
where well, it used to be in one field, we worked on it, and actually changed the name to the Innovative Partners. Had hundreds of people working on those projects for a few years. We went from doing those things to what we're doing now in refineries. And one of the things entrepreneurs do is you diversify. You don't put all your eggs in one basket. You make sure that when one area may be slow, you have something else to keep you going. So we started doing schools and hospitals. And just anything that we could do, even the refinery during that time had gotten very slow in refineries. So we had to keep doing other things. One of the things that I, that, that I also would say is that we not only worked locally, but we would work in New Mexico, Mississippi, Louisiana. <coughs> you want to be re you want to be regional. Being in business, and, and let me just say this: there is a difference in a technician and an entrepreneur. There's a there, there's a difference. A technician is somebody that can actually do the work, but but may not be able to run a business. Everybody that can actually do a job necessarily can't be a business person. But an entrepreneur, a true entrepreneur, is someone that will not only be able to do the job, but someone that can duplicate what they're, the, the services they're providing. For example, look at McDonald's. The original owner of McDonald's was out of a garage. But when, his, when, when this company was sold, and then they got McDonald's all over the world, they duplicated services. If you notice, that particular corporation, it's a lot of kids when you go in there that's pretty much winning. That's what you mean. It's a lot of high school kids, college kids. I mean, that's what I was when I used to go. I'm not trying to back off that dog now. But, but I will tell you this, is it's amazing when you can duplicate it. Entrepreneurship, you want to grow your business. You grow your business. You grow your services. One of the things we have to be so successful until we started thinking about doing business outside of America. We do, we do business now in Canada. We look at opportunities in Belize, East, Australia, India. These are companies that we actually done. I bet you Dr. Zaloum and Chu didn't think we were going to be doing that, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either, so I know y'all didn't. <laughs> but, but what I will tell you, it's exciting. And, one, and it's easy to do global business. It's not as hard as one would think. We as Americans, we, think we have gotten so accustomed to doing business in our own backyard. Well, let me tell you something. Your own backyard doesn't work anymore. In my generation, it may have worked. In my generation, my competition was my next door neighbor across the street. I competed against him for the job, for the opportunity. But today, you're competing against people all over the world. We didn't have the internet. Matter of fact, <laughs> when I came here in the very beginning, you know, uh, we didn't even have cell phones. We had pagers. And I, I was so broke, I had a garage door I used to keep making it look like I had a pager. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, I did, because I wanted to be cool. Everybody had one. I had one. <laughs> so I had a garage door open, and it, I had like with my pager, you know. <laughs> That's but, but let me tell you something. Nowadays with the internet, people texting, I would have never, in, I've seen this stuff from Star Trek, but <laughs> I never thought this was going to be reality. To be able to send and communicate with somebody all over the world in a matter of seconds. <clears throat> you have to, you have to can always keep that on your mind. You want to think and position yourself to where you're not limiting yourself to just one, one area. Global, Americans, businesses, we're so accustomed of just doing business with each other. And in my opinion, just in Port Arthur, just in Beaumont, just in Golden Triangle, we're not even reaching out to our, our own country. We're not reaching out to Louisiana. We're not reaching out to Mississippi or uh, New Mexico. There's a lot of opportunities all over this country. Then to go outside this country, let me tell you, you have, we are a consumer, is what we are. That's the reality to it. We do more buying than we do trading to other countries. We're buying their price. Believe me, they don't mind selling to us. 
But you know the flip side of that is they actually, other countries actually want to do business with us. I don't know because we've gotten so relaxed or we just be amigos, but it's not as hard as you think. You have the U.S. Department of Commerce that would help anybody do business overseas at any time. You can visit their website, U.S. Department of Commerce. They'll, you can be taught all kind of uh, ways of doing business abroad. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Just like you do a business plan here before you start your business, you do a business plan you, when you want to extend to other countries, you put together a business plan. You make sure your finances are, are able to support that. It's the same type of rules, but you want to be very careful in some of the countries you do business with. U.S. Department can help you. One of the things that I was afraid of, <coughs> spend a whole lot of money overseas, and not getting paid. <laughs> that was a big concern of mine. We go do all this work. But there are insurance companies out there that will guarantee 90% of what you spend, which limits your risk. Now you're risking from 100% to maybe only 10%, which increase your chances of success. There are some of the largest opportunities, especially in the oil and gas business, you would not believe going on right now in Canada. Our best friend, well, I know he's my best friend, because you know, he's been doing pretty good to me. <laughs> Matter of fact, I plan on uh, getting a, a dual citizenship there. But uh, Canada is, they've they got the same oil that's going on right now, Fort, in uh, Fort McMurray, Canada, and they are booming. Boom. And it's not all engineering jobs. And it's not all, you have accounting, there's entrepreneurs, businesses, you can start all kinds of businesses overseas, even there. Let me tell you something a lot of people don't realize. When you look at oil and gas, we use their products every day. We're so used to seeing it, you don't even realize that we're using them. Unless you butt naked and living in a cave, you use their products. Believe me, from drinking water, with the plastic, to your eyeglasses, to the buttons on your shirt, to adhesive on the on bandages. We don't think about it. You go to McDonald's and get that cold drink and you're sucking it through a straw. Chemical plants. DuPont. I know you heard it. With that stained master carpet. And ladies, you heard it. Nylon paint holes. DuPont has the patent on nylon. <coughs> We don't think the refiners, we think of oil and gas, but you have the tires for your vehicle. There's so many colors, paints, you won't miss them. And there's opportunities in those industries that you wouldn't imagine. Everybody in the refinery is not an engineer. Everybody in the refinery is not uh, uh, a welder or a pipe fitter. You have accountants. You have people with business degrees. Many entrepreneurs in total different trades. I know guys that's got janitorial sources, that got several hundred people making hundreds of millions of dollars cleaning offices. That's amazing. A lot of people wouldn't even think about that in a refinery, but it's a service being provided. I just want to ask a question. How many people in here even thinking about I was just showing him to open up a business one day. That's awesome. Statistic-wise, it's about two out of a couple of hundred. I, I would be very, I didn't see my mother walk in. I have to say hello to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see her walking in, so I would be very out of line not to say hello to my mother. So I love you, baby. <laughs> and, uh, but back to what I was saying, <clears throat> global is so exciting to meet all kinds of interesting people. I think when I first went to Canada, I met, I met the, um, uh, this gentleman was the attorney general for the country. We became real close friends. We all, well, 
we have to be Mason brothers, by the way. And because of that, we really started growing. And um, but we opportunities started opening up. And one of the things that I will tell you, and I see we have a lot of women and minorities in here. When you're in business, people talk about minority diversity. Let me tell you, when you're overseas, those conversations ain't gonna come up. They only came up in this country. When I'm working in Canada and the other places we worked in, I don't know any programs that's minority diversity or women on business. They're concerned about making money, the services you provide, meeting their schedules. That's what interests them. And when you sell yourself on your own merits, you open up opportunities that's beyond belief. We, we're looking at right now, uh, GP Industry, we're looking at hiring a couple hundred people uh, in Port Arthur. We're also looking at hiring people to do work in Canada and also in Detroit, in Chicago. Uh, one of the projects we're working on is the, uh, we're working on the uh, Canadian crew. I'm sure y'all guys know that up Canadian crew. And uh, there's a, a friend of mine, probably I know Dr. Zulu and Dr. Chip, I know Tom Purvis. Uh, Tom Purvis is the, uh, the uh, Tom, Tom is now, he's currently in Canada with Shell Oil, and he's over the sand oils, the whole entire project for, for uh, Shell. And uh, we're looking to do some great things with him. And I would love to bring some of y'all guys. And I'm looking at the business with Dr. Zaloon, hopefully we'll, we'll get some people and give them some opportunities. But don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself to only want to work in one area. Have an open mind. Be willing to travel. Be willing to do things outside the box. Something different. Set your own destiny. Don't let somebody tell you you can't do it. If that was the, I would be standing here talking to y'all guys right now. There's no way in the world if I would have listened to what the people tell me what I can't do <clears throat> that I would be doing this right now. When people tell you you can't do something, whether it's business or whatever it is, basically what they tell you is they can't do it. Because you should set your own destiny. I've been able to take the things when people will tell me what I can't do. It just drives me and makes me go hard. I'm going to show you. I can do it. If you can do it, I can do it better. Trust me, I'm going to do it better. Especially when I use my mind. Now, I may not be able to run as fast as you or jump as I am, but let me tell you something. <coughs> I set my limits. And so should each and every one of y'all guys in here. Uh, Lamar University, this is where I started. <coughs> Had it not been, I'm very, very uh, uh, tickled pink to see two of my professors in here. And it's just exciting. And it makes me feel so good inside. Because these guys knew me before I was doing anything. And to see these guys here and they know what we're doing is just God sent. It's a blessing. With success comes responsibility of sharing your success. Giving back. Don't just make the money and keep it and it's all about you. You share. And it's not always just giving money all the time. Sometimes it's giving you time. Sometimes it's giving you advice. But don't make it where it's all about you. Give back. I promise you, the more you give, the more you're going to receive. It's a very easy, simple formula. You know, that's been my model as a child. And yeah, that's going to be my model until I die. And I would encourage each and every one of you guys, anybody, especially because there's quite a few of y'all guys talking about going into business. Let me just say this. Whether you sell the blue jeans overseas, that's an international business. If you have a website and people ordering from your website, buying different items off your website overseas, that's an international business. It's not hard to do international business. But you want to make sure, but you want to make sure 
that when you go international and you do international, that you learn the laws and the rules of the particular country that you're doing business in. And a great place to start that, I'll say again, is the U.S. Department of Commerce. We use them all the time. There's also classes that you can take that help guide you through international. But once you get going, it's a lot of fun. You meet a lot of interesting people. I didn't realize my recruitment would be so young. And it, and it just is exciting to see so many young people that's interested in doing business. What I would, what I, I left some of my cards here, and um, if I can help anybody in this room, call. I'm here to support. Is there any questions? Thank you. one of the most unique areas to me in this country. 17% of our nation's oil is produced out of Fort Arthur, Texas. The Spindle Town, right here in Beaumont, right down the street from Lamar University. region wise, if we can work together the cities come together, our councils come together. That's why I ask councilmen and county commissioners to come. I believe in the regionalization. You regionalize, it just, you know, it's not me against you or you against him. It's about us as a region working together. Then we all can grow. There's no reason why we should be having double digit employment. Now when you have billions of dollars of, of expansions going on in your community. And we have people from the outside coming in, getting our jobs. We have to figure it out and put aside our personal feelings and think about business, black and white. I may not like you personally, but that don't mean we can't get rich together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you already know you understand. <laughs> Everybody say, I'm going to see you at the end. <laughs> but, you know, we have to put aside our personal feelings and think about business. And that's the reality to it. It's black and white. Period. If we can work what's good for the team, it's going to affect all of us. I remember we were putting a new water plant in Port Arthur. I served with a comedian in Port Arthur. Everybody drink out that water plant. People that like each other, love each other, hate each other. We all use the same water. It doesn't affect one side of the community versus the other. It affects all of us. That's how we need to be regionalized for opportunities. Work with our, with our educational, higher uh, levels of education. Lamar, you know, Lamar has four campuses. And you can learn something all four of them. Let me tell you, in my opinion, Lamar has the best engineering program I've ever heard of in my life. And I think one of the reasons for that is because of all the refineries we have here. You'd be surprised the number of people from Lamar that graduated here working in these refineries. And from engineers to business to nursing. Lamar has some of the best, one of the best business programs, one of the best engineering programs, one of the best nursing programs in the country. I mean, it just goes on right here in Beaumont, Texas. So can you imagine if you all start working together, regionalize, we can go that much further. Anybody? Yes, sir? With uh, all the success that you've gained thus far, how do you continue to keep an entrepreneurial mind and, like, I guess, uh, grow to the, try to continue growing and expanding into new markets or, I guess, have new products or new services? And what are some entrepreneurial goals that you have today looking to the future? Very good question. Have you ever heard of a microscope? Yeah. Have you ever
you ever looked at one? Yes. Okay. To me, when I went global, it was like looking at the microscope. If I had a proper, if I went out in the outside, we had a pot of water, got a drop of water, put it on a slide, and I looked at it through a microscope. Looking at it, I didn't see a drop of water. But through the microscope, we see all kinds of little stuff floating in it, right? Well, the analogy to that is, when I went global, it was like a whole new world. Let me tell you, it's like, when you go global with your business, it's so exciting, and you need so many exciting people. It's fun. Not to mention, you can make some real serious money. And it's not as hard as people think it is. Because other countries want to do business with American companies. They want to do business with us. And that's half the battle. But a lot of us, for whatever reason, whether we're lazy, or we just got content with what I got, or I'm not, I'm not willing to take a risk, we stay in one area. I know companies that want you that's in full off and had me come to both my business right down the street. And there's a lot of opportunities, right? If they would just come from full off and go out to full off. And what keeps me going is the excitement. And a good woman. to go out and do a business, it, that's half the battle because you got an idea of how to put it together. Banks want to see your business plan. They want, they want to look at it. You know, so, uh, does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Yeah. What type of services does GP Industrial provide? And uh, you said you look for a couple of hundred students. What type of opportunities are actually at GP Industrial for those students? Well, let me tell you, we, we hire engineers. We had uh, CAD operators, senior pipe designers, accountants. We have people who do a whole bunch of power wires. The service we provide civil work, pipe, steel fabrication, uh, engineering, 
uh, we do warehousing. It's just a slew of opportunities. I mean, we have people working from us, like to be a person with a biology degree, for example, to people with accounting degree, CPAs, engineers. Uh, it all depends on the projects that we got going on at the time. That's pretty much what you do. I see somebody else have a hand. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever had an or a business venture that was unsuccessful, and how did you handle it? Well, I think pretty much most people go into business, um, go into things that they wish they had went into. <laughs> you know, I wish you know, hindsight is 2020. But yes, I've had some situations where I wish I could have handled it a little different. Or, uh, matter of fact, that's an excellent question. I got a good example. I don't know the ones in this room that may remember the old private movie theater you used to have here by the mall. Okay. Uh, when Hurricane Reed hit, we got a contract with the county, the county, <laughs> to do tree disposal. I had heard it was a lot of money in it. So I said, I'm going to try it out. So we got a whole bunch of dump trucks and people and started picking up branches all over the county, bringing them to a, bring them to a location, and they were going to be disposed of. Well, we started getting a mountain of trees, and then things started happening to me in the park house. Which branches rubbed against each other, started fires. <laughs> and we couldn't put them up. They burned for months. I mean, I'm literally, this is right down the street. EPA got involved. <laughs> TNRCC got involved. I mean, it was terrible. The city, the county. We wasn't the only one that had trees burning. We could have had these places all over, the, all over the county. And people were having that problem. Inexperience, not doing the business. We didn't know. So that was one that I wish I would have never done. <laughs> I would never do that again. <laughs> I need that for experience. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what was the hardest challenge you faced when you founded um, DC Industries? Well, really, uh, whether or not I wanted to get involved in that or go to law school. Because I had talked about law school so much, I was so hyped up. And when this presented itself, you know, I spoke to my wife. Because at the time, we were, our plans were she had finished nursing and was going to go back, get a master's degree. I was going to go to law school. And I mean, that was like a six-year plan. And to take a six-year plan, <coughs> when this opportunity came, just making the decision whether or not I wanted to do that. And uh, honestly, I don't know too many lawyers do what we're doing. So I'm very happy with the decision I made. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Um, compared to when you first started, how did you actually market All y'all ask a good question. Let me tell you, when I first started the company and I was working, man, I would, I, I would tell people we could do anything, build a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honest. I mean, I would say, I wanted some work, and I would say, hey, I'm going to get the people. We can build this, we can do this, we can do everything. Until I found out that don't go in the world. You hadn't had your first job yet, but you could build a spaceship. <laughs> So we had to find out what we wanted to specialize in. <coughs> what did we really want to sell? You had to limit your services to what you're good at, and then you market that. And then you don't, you know, and, I, and our future entrepreneurs, <coughs> people, you know, specialize in something. Now, as you grow and as you make money and as you build your resume up and your reputation, you can add <coughs> services. You add services. But don't start out. I don't know, I mean, we had so many services we provided, and we hadn't even performed any of them yet. Yeah, but I had some supporters back in the time using reputation. <coughs> but they knew I couldn't do it. I was, and the, you know, that's why I didn't get to work. <laughs> but what we did was we limited our services, and we uh, specialized in pipe welding and fabrication. 
and we got very good, got known at it, and then we added some more services. Until now, we got this is a slew of more services we provided at this point in time. No, they were not have to But uh, we do so many now. Marketing, of course, the internet, word of mouth. You, uh, you find a lot of entrepreneurs that's involved in politics. But let me tell you, that's a fine line. That's a fine line. Don't be too political. It's good to know politicians, but don't be a politician. <laughs> okay? Because you don't want to, if you're too political, clients not going to want to touch you. But it's good to be able to know that they know you know somebody. And you can pick their phone up and get it to you. You know, and, and that, there's a fine line. I've watched some businesses, and I almost got caught up in that, to where I had gotten too political. You, 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 that's one thing you don't want. And it goes back to that trial and error I was telling you about earlier. You know, so uh, we marketed it once we started doing good work, word of mouth. And it started spreading. And it got spread. But one thing I always done, and I say because there are so many minorities and women here, I didn't beat my clients over this minority stuff. I didn't do that. I told them hire me because we can do the job. If you don't have the confidence that we can perform, and do your good job at a competitive price, then don't hire us. And I was so crazy, I would tell people, hey, we'll do the job for free if you don't like it. <laughs> I'm serious. And I'm gonna tell you, one, one job we did, we had went in figuring it one way, and by the time we finished the job, we had figured out a better way of doing it, cut the price in half. And this was the old Clark refinery, which is now the level. We were going, I, in my mind, like, hey, man, look, we saved money. We're going to give them the money back. And that made it look good to them. So we tried to give them some money back. I said, no, because if y'all would have failed, we weren't going to give you no extra money. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to pay it out your pocket. That taught me a good lesson. You know? And so we market <coughs> and just getting out there knocking on doors, we business round tables. Um, we, that's how we got around the market out. Yes, sir. You listen to rap music? Y'all <laughs> 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 like Tupac, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an old Frankie Beverly and oh, Mays kind of guy. Right? Right. I'm an old school, brother, okay? I'm a little jazz. I'm a little jazz. You got me, right? <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, hey sir, uh, actually I want to ask you from all of the, on behalf of the all graduate students, what is the main thing that you look for in a graduate student during hiring? What's that again? What is the main thing or main quality you look for during hiring a graduate student? What are you hiring? Yeah. Well, okay, well let me tell you. Okay, one of the things I look at on anybody you hire is, you know, they got old customers. And that old custom is when you woke up and you shake somebody's hand, it says a lot about a person. You know, whether you squeeze it too tight, whether you got a limp hand shake, you know, <laughs> all you got to is front of the hand shake. That's the first thing I notice. Okay? I also notice how you dress and where you carry yourself. And, you know, I've had many people that have, have, have uh, a background in one area. But when we interview, we're stuck in a whole different area. And the reason why, because their skills may not have been necessarily in a particular area, but they, they were trainable. And the skills they had, we knew they had the right attitudes. They represented themselves very well. So we put in other spots and gave them a shot. They did real good. Who ever thought I'd have a person with a biology degree working in the county? They may even be a dentist. She's been working for two years? A year and a half? Okay. Go on two years. <laughs> you know, so a lot of it is how you present yourself. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily, let me tell you, uh, I had an aim. Uh, I remember I was, I think, 16 years old. She At the time, she was working for a brother. And she had graduated from Lamar in uh, fashion retail merchandise. Do y'all still have any campus? Yeah. Okay, she graduated in that. 
She went to work for Southwestern Bell, his sister, <laughs> Lydia. She went to work for Southwestern Bell. But one thing stuck with me about that. This I'm talking about almost, my goodness, probably 38 years ago. One of the things that stuck with me about that was she went with a fashion retail merchandise degree. But when she got hired at Southwestern Bell, they had them. Uh, she, I know her telling me they asked her, whoever has a college degree, raise your hand. And two ladies raised their hand. Those two ladies got a better job making more money because they had a college degree. Isn't that something? Even though they weren't working in their field. You know, so every case is individual. It's a person by person situation. You know, but it's how you represent yourself. Yes, sir. stand on my shoulders, so I don't stand on my shoulders. <coughs> and I even got some of my employees here. I like to be informed of what's going on because at the end of the day, I'm the one ultimately going to be responsible. And if a mistake is made, it's going to cost me. But at the same time, I don't believe you micromanage. I believe you allow professionals to do their professional job. And you, I, I see myself as their technical support person. That's how I view myself. I'm here to assist you in doing a good job. So tell me what you need so I can get it for you to do your job. That's kind of how I do. I can't speak for other people, but I, I view myself as more of a technical support. I've got jobs that haven't been on in 10 years. They ain't one on job stuff. In 10 years. They all say it. Don't do it. And I hope I will have to go to the sites. You know, but at the, but at the same time, you know, we're here, we're not abandoning you, but we're here to support you if you need us. Just call us. Now that's, that's how it works for me. Yes, sir. Well, let's get this guy a chance here. Oh, go ahead, sir. Oh, go ahead. This is often said, save money to make money. Excuse me. You mentioned the economic development thing. Um, now, there's a lot of people in the city want to start here. Are they there just to assist as far as strategies and advice? Or are they actually there to have a lot of money to say to you? That you well, want to start. You're talking about the people here today? Yeah. Well, why don't you just. Let's talk to those ladies out. You know, they're not giving me the right to give you a check today. No, no, I'm not saying that. That's not going to happen. No, I'm saying that before. You said, you said talk to the economic government as far as, you know, just talk to them. What, what would you talk to them about as far as? Well, if someone is interested in uh, starting a business, uh, these young ladies are more on the financial side, uh, or how, especially if you do a business for authors, how they can help assist you if you fall within the law to where we can assist you. Because everybody that's in business under our EDC, if you would open up a McDonald's restaurant, they couldn't help you. But if you were doing something that was industrial that would support one of the industries yeah, or training, yeah. they would be able to help you on financial and help you get your business plan and, and direct you to different people. And even Lamar has uh, uh, advisors that you can talk to that can help you with business plans and those type of things. I don't know who it is on this campus, but uh, trust me, they have it. Small, small business. 
And let me tell you, getting, getting your hug certification is good. That's a good thing. I don't know if y'all guys have heard of hug. Hug is called uh, historic, historic underutilized business. It's a record, it's the state of Texas that actually build that. Also getting a D uh, certification, which is a federal certification. Uh, and anybody can get those two certifications, whether you're minority or not. It, uh, you, you need to qualify for those certifications, especially when you want to do uh, business with the Department of Transportation. They look at you, you, you look at the PBE certification on the airports, anything pertaining to transportation, the PBE certification would be something to get. And I know you said, well, I'm going to do the Department of Highway. You'd be surprised. Everybody there has done all for my country. You know, you've got people doing accounting, you've got people doing so many different facets to all of these industries. There's opportunities. You, you can have a, uh, uh, providing services to other companies. For example, safety equipment. You can have a company that just provide hard hats, your Nomex boots, safety glasses, and so on. You know, so it's it just all up to your imagination and what type of business you want. Somebody that's local is a Lamar graduate. Um, they both have the same amount of qualifications. They both are certified. Well, it depends. You know, I, I understand the question. And you said, and I'm in Canada? No, no, no. I'm saying that if, you know, since you went global, okay. you know, you have somebody from India that wants to work for a certain position in Auckland, and then you have somebody that's local, Lamar graduate. Are they going to be working here or somewhere else? Here? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, it all depends. Everything is, that's why I get into the politics stuff, okay. internal political politics. Mm -hmm. Because, quite frankly, I'm passionate to the mall first, okay? But you still at the same level, I'm going to get the same services, and I'm going to probably hire the mall first. And that's just me personally, okay? I can't speak to somebody else, okay? But if I was doing the work in India, mm -hmm. I'm going to hire that India person. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> now I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. No, okay? But I'm certain all the water, why wouldn't I? <coughs> you know, I got to listen. That almost doesn't matter who I'm going to get first. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so like myself, I'm, I'm going to school, but I also work in a company that I work for specialized. Are you going to stay with the same company? Yes, I'm, I want to stay I would let them know what my intentions are. Okay. I would, I would, me personally, I would let them know what my intentions are. I mean, they may, you know, they may have opportunities before you even graduate. You know, they may have an internship or something they may be slide to you. They, they, I would let them know I'm interested as soon as possible. I would, let, me personally, I would let them know what my intentions are, what my plans are, what my goals are. And you might find that they would help assist you to achieve them. A lot of companies, that. We do. I've said, I don't know how much money I spent on Darnell Corner going to class. <laughs> you know, I know it's been a quite a few thousands. <laughs> but, you know, you'd be surprised. Your company, your employer, me, support you through what you're doing. Everything I know you're talking about the ladies here, they, they do like support a lot of guidance on, on what you're doing there, correct? Right? So, yeah. The ladies that, that you were talking about, the right here, they help them like the guidance on. What do you say? That's what you say. That Lamar, the Small Business Development Center can help you. I mean, I'm sure that they can help as well. We have resources at the university and throughout the region to help. Those are at least two contacts. Okay. All right. Is it
Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much.